Another episode of the Above Average Joe Show. Today we have a special guest here again, an actress who has starred in such things as Roommates Unwanted, The Doorway, has worked on Field of Vision, and also been in Realm of Souls. This is actress, the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented, Jessica Schmall. <laughs> As always, I am your host, Joe. I see what shit's on our better. Wow, wow, that is a first. Let's just keep moving on from there. <laughs> the guest is not supposed to laugh at that, just so you know. Mm. How are you doing, Jessica? <laughs> I'm doing really well, thank you. How are You're you? You're feeling better now that I've been insulted, don't you? <laughs> it's, uh, it's lightened the mood. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> um, you are an actress. Mm-hmm. Um, one question that I do like to ask all of the actors and actresses that have been on the show. As an actor, which I will use as all gender encompassing mm-hmm. as an actor, how would you define what you do as an actor to somebody who has never seen acting before, doesn't know what acting is, hasn't seen TV movies? What do you do for a living? How would you explain that to somebody? I would say that acting is being able to portray a character being able to relay a message, whatever that message might be, um, being able to just express any emotion, any emotion, sadness, happiness. So if I can, if I can relay the message, then I'm I'm doing my job. If I can tell the story right, how the how the story is supposed to be told, then I'm doing it right. Um, it's it's all through action and emotion, and it's just it is one of my favorite things to do, and I, I love it. And who are some of your favorite actors or actresses? Well, we'll use actor as all-encompassing genders. Mm -hmm. Who are some of your favorite actors that you feel do this very well? That's very easy. So Meryl Streep is my number one. Um, She can literally play any character. I mean, she's brilliant. Um, I have seen her play from, you know, like The Witch all the way from um, Margaret Thatcher. I mean, she's just absolutely brilliant. I would love to work with her. I, uh, I'm not so sure that, that would happen. <laughs> that is, um, that's really having my hopes, my hopes high. At some point, it could happen. I wouldn't uh, rule it out necessarily. We'll see. Um, Shoot for the stars. Don't limit yourself. No, I'm shooting for the stars. I hope to one day work with Meryl Streep. That would be my ideal job. I mean, that right there. If I if I work with Meryl, I'm done. I'll be good. I'll be set for life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another favorite, though, I really love um, Kate Blanchett. She's Another brilliant um, actress, portray really any character. Um, and Sandra Bullock, who I think everybody loves because she's Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> and she just, she's just that uh, girl next door. Um, Do you have any male actors? That Johnny you Depp. Johnny yes, Depp. absolutely. He is another one. Um, I would compare him to Meryl. They're both like pretty much on the same level as, as far as being able to, yeah, being able to act on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, they're both very good at what they do. They're both naturals, and that's that's what that's what I hope to to portray as well. Just that it's natural and that it's you know fun. Um, that's who, yeah, Meryl Streep right there. And what are some films? Um, doesn't necessarily have to include any of them mm-hmm. that you feel that the actors were able to do their best job and was captured in a performance what are some of your films that you would say this was a great group of actors on this film i mean it's not a movie but as a show american horror story that's that's one where all the actors are so incredible which is why they reuse them through um each season it's just an incredible show i i am obsessed with all the actors sarah paulson um uh i can't even think of his name right now um Oh, Evan, Evan, what is his Evan name? Evan Gates. No, not Evan Gates. Um, Evan Peters. Peters. Evan Peters. Sorry, Evan different Evans. So many Evans. <laughs> so many. Chris um, Evans. 
Chris Evans, yeah. <laughs> was not on that show. No, no, he was not. <laughs> Evan Peters, <laughs> Kathy Bates, Jessica Lange, like all of them. They're brilliant actors. And by the way, Jessica has a puppy here, so if you hear dog <laughs> noises and jingling in the background. That's her cue. <laughs> That is Chewy, the most adorable dog you'll ever see oh, wearing cutest. a pink sweater. Is that pink colored? Pink and gray. Yeah. It's kind of a peachy kind pink. Kind of like a salmon. Corn. Salmon. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Salmon. Salmonella. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the projects that you've worked on, um, The Doorway, Realm of Souls, Creature Feature, Horror movies. Mm. I know that you're a horror movie buff because I've known you for almost the last decade or possibly even a decade. Yes. It's been a while. Yes. Um, for the films that you've worked on, what did you like about working on these horror films? Well, I liked being able to do something completely different. So my first movie, The Doorway, <clears throat> I had to play a bitch. And... That is not who I am at all, so it was, yeah, see, yeah, I knew you would do that. <laughs> but it was Sorry, so, we joke around a yeah. lot, we insult each other, yeah. it's out of love. <laughs> it is out of love, it's out of love. Um, but it was just so much fun to tap into that. I had a blast, and they were like, I, we, we hated you, we, you did a good job, I'm like, yes, that's, um, I, I really, my, that was also my first experience, I was able to help with sound, um, even assistant directing. Um, which is low-budget filming, obviously, because I am not an assistant director. <laughs> um, uh, but it's it's been really fun to be able to try, like, different outlets. Um, but acting is, of course, you know, my favorite. Um, and then all the other ones, uh, just being able to play a character, uh, like, being scared, getting that kind of emotion out of me that I'm not, like, normally feeling, that was... I love being able to just tap into something else and get out of myself for a while. That's that's my favorite part of it. That was actually a question that I was thinking this afternoon while I was actually on the way over here, was I know that you don't get scared very easily, mm -hmm. but working on a horror movie set and knowing that you're working in the movie, how scary is it actually on set while you're filming? I mean, they set the atmosphere so you're in these very scary places, they have either scary creatures or a murderer that's out there or something that's happening that you're supposed to be afraid of. How much of that environment do you suck in and absorb to where there actually is at least a little bit of a chill of that feeling while you're on set? Or is it just like, no, there's nothing scary about this. I could just, I just go to that place. <laughs> I feel scared. I do my acting. Or do you get absorbed and actually feel at least a little bit of terror? I didn't feel, I didn't feel terror, but in the doorway, um, there was this abandoned house that we had to film in, and so all the lights had to be out. Um, actually, I think electricity was out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we filmed so at night, of on course. Purpose. Right, of course. Um, but in the basement, we had to, or actually, I think it was already drawn, but there was this um, pentagram, uh, and so... They would hear, like, door slam on set. I thought it was just other people, like, messing around. I didn't take it seriously. It didn't scare me. But it scared a lot of the actors on set. Um, and then when I had to do my scene for my scream, there were other actors in the room that were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so that woke every single person up. I mean, I gave every – I mean, oh, it was great. It was great. Um, that was probably the, the scariest moment for them, actually. And you've got a tremendous – horror screen, which I really feel like asking you to perform mm -hmm. it, except for the fact that we're in an apartment, apartment complex, complex. That's just in downtown LA. <laughs> yeah, that won't be able to. And it's 10, 1040 at night, so I, yeah, I feel I like there'd be that. a lot of cop calls coming there in would. with a screen like that. There would. But you can probably go on YouTube. I think it's still in the trailers and stuff to where you could... I think it is, actually, it, in the doorway. Yeah, I was going to yes. say, I think it's in the doorway. So go on to YouTube, check out the doorway trailer. And that scream is Jessica's scream. So if you want to listen to it, find it, turn it all the way up, and it will send chills down your spine it was listening fun. to it. It was fun. I didn't even know I could scream like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. And then just a quick uh, run back through history. This will be a really quick conversation, <laughs> I think, just to throw in here. Um, Field of Vision. Mm. This is when you were doing a little bit of background work just to pick up a little bit of money. 
you were actually on set with your mom. That's right. And also another friend, and your mom brought a friend, and it was like a big group get-together. And it was the first set where I met you. It was. That was the set where we first met. Um, we were, what were we filming that day? The, was the football rant? scene. It was a football scene. Yeah. That's right, a football game. Yeah. And fun fact, when we shot the football game, you look in the bleachers, <laughs> they only hired enough people to fill in half of a bleacher. Yep. And so they had us go from one set of bleachers to the next, To then we move up to the top set of the bleacher. Then we move one section over, fill up the top, one section down in that same section. And they did what's called plating. Mm -hmm. And so they would film us, they'd go back, and in post-production, they copy and paste us into different sections. So when you're watching the... Oh, and we had to also change outfits every time we moved. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because oh, that's right. they didn't want to have the same guy wearing the same orange jacket. I forgot about 15 that. 15 times inside the same oh, set of features. Oh, that was such features. a pain. I remember. <laughs> oh, gosh. I uh, forgot about that. And I don't know if you... Re do you remember what we talked about the first day at all? Any of the conversations? Um, I just remember us being really cold and you providing blankets and you were so sweet. Um... But as far as conversation, I'm not sure. I no, talked about crabs. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. I, I don't, don't remember how it came up, but somebody had mentioned crabs, and you gave this really detailed explanation <laughs> of what crabs are, what they do, how they can jump from toilet no, seats. No, I did not. Yeah, you did. And we didn't even know each other yet, and you're giving this explanation of crabs. I do not even remember And I was like, oh my this. gosh, this girl is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> how do I not remember this? That's, oh, wow. So, no, well, that says a, a lot about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not going to ask why you so knew so much about it. We will skip over that conversation. <laughs> I know, right? I've never had crabs. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I just have to. <laughs> I was asking for a friend of a friend, you know. <laughs> um, but one thing that you have been working on, which is one of my favorite web series, is Roommates Unwanted. So much fun. Um, tell us a little bit about Roommates Unwanted. What is that about? So it's kind of like a take on friends, um, but the opposite. So it's like these these people who didn't know each other move into this house, um, and they're supposed to be just two girls, but they have a landlord that's living in the basement that they have no idea about. So they needed two other roommates. They got two guys instead of two other girls. So it just became like this... Um, Kind Awkward of battle, yeah, situation. like, yeah, between, yeah, <laughs> unwanted roommates, really. Um, but it's about, like, their growth and how they bond and um, help each other through things, like friends. Uh, it's just really cute, and I'm actually a fan of it. I hope it does, I hope it do, does really well. Uh, roommates are wanted. <laughs> See it, please. And when does your character come in? Because you're so, not in the first episode. No. Um, you're not fourth. one of the roommates. <clears throat> not yet, no. Yeah, not, um, not at the beginning. Right. Season, I mean, uh, episode four. Episode four of season one. Of season one. It's called um, The Nightmare on, G uh, on uh, Gabe Street, I think. <laughs> Something like that. And when you show up, what? who is your character and describe <clears throat> what she is like? So I play the psycho ex-girlfriend who stalks her ex well she still thinks they're together she's crazy i mean she's legitimately crazy she's in a relationship and he denies it and he denies it because yes. he's dumped her several times already and told <laughs> her they're not <laughs> but yeah. she doesn't understand this <laughs> yeah so she's just not, like continuously sending like baked goods to him like every week and just always stalking then she shows up to his house one day um and it was a new house, so he didn't even know that she knew that he lived there. <laughs> so this is how crazy she is. Um, uh, and then they show how the characters dated back in college for just a little bit. So you see, like, the real crazy. Um, and she had, like, a key made to his apartment he had no idea about. Um, and she would just come in and roam around the apartment, look through things, take yes, things. Yes. Things would just disappear out of nowhere, and he thought he was going crazy. She, she's pretty insane. Um, and then it turns out later in the, se in the second season, she starts dating the landlord, who's also... Spoiler uh, alerts. We're going to give a little <laughs> few spoilers right. here just in case. Spoiler alert, yeah. Who is also crazy, so they're a perfect match for each other. <laughs> um, but that is one of the most fun for me. Like, 
And uh, your character's name is Courtney. Yes. And like you said, she's crazy. Crazy Courtney. Um, from what I know about you, you're only about halfway there. <laughs> so how, what do you do to prepare for a character like that? How do you get into character and go from halfway normal to halfway crazy? Make that transition and it come across to the viewer. Have just, you researched crazy people? I have Do you live not. with crazy people? I have not. But, I mean, acting, like, I've always done that, like, on, like I'm, I'm kind of sad. Like, by myself, like, just in the mirror. It's something I've always done for a very, very long time. So, I just kind of, like, just as soon as, as soon as I get to know the character, I try and tap into that. But when I found out the crazy, I... I don't know. It it just came. I, I hate to say it, but it just kind of came It's somewhere naturally. deep down inside of you in reality um, that you have suppressed. But it was so much fun being able to do that, being able to like have that switch. Um, but transitioning, transitioning um, because I am not that person at all. I have never stalked a boyfriend in my life. I, that That's not me at all. So Courtney is the exact opposite of who I am. So I just... I don't even know how, I, I guess. It's just tapping into that to that character. I got to know who she was, what she was all about, what she wanted. And so I just, I was like, okay, put yourself in Courtney's shoes. This is what you want. Gabe is what you want. So I just went after that. And like, that was on my mind. I tried to make it as real as I could. And as a testament to getting into that character, um, here's another fun story too. Mm -hmm. My roommate had watched the show, mm -hmm. and so she's seen Roommates Unwanted. I'd seen it, but I'd known Jessica for years and years before that, so I knew how Jessica was. We have fun, we hang out, we have laugh, all that fun stuff. The only thing that my roommate at the time had seen was Roommates Unwanted. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to go hang out with my friend Jessica, we're going to go to Walmart, I think it was. It was either Walmart or Target, one Walmart. of those stores. We sent her a and picture. And we were just going to go shopping. We sent her a picture, and she freaks out and was like, you need to get away from her. She's psycho. Because <laughs> yeah. she literally thought you were that character. Which is great. And I was like, what's, what's wrong? She's like, have you not watched Roommates Unwanted? That's <laughs> so like, great. I was so happy to hear that. <laughs> I was so happy to hear that. I'm like, yes. <laughs> And then when I met her, she was, like, hiding behind the door. Oh, yeah. She, she yeah. was, like, peeking around the that corners, really hesitant. Um, she had her fiancé, Chris, stand in between yeah, that's them. Right. That's which right. Chris has worked on the show, too, yeah. so he had met you before. Oh, yeah, and, I'd met him And before. knew that you were mm -hmm. normal-ish. Yes. <laughs> Ish. Ish. So <laughs> let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we will be right back after a word from these faux sponsors. This episode brought to you by Johnny's Dairy Air. You've smelled Johnny's forest air. You've inhaled his sea air. Don't you think it's about time to take a whiff of some dairy air? Johnny's Dairy Air. Available in milk or manure. Boys and girls, moms and dads, grandparents and puppies, y'all come on down to Wycliffe's Ice Creamatorium for your favorite creamy delights. We will cremate your relatives and while you wait, we will put ice cream in your belly. We bake and shake the flavors right in front of you. We have over 50 different cold cadaver flavors such as Mexican, ice cream, ginger, spicy Italian, curds, Cornish, German chocolate, and my favorite, Karen, just to name a few. We also provide store credit for fresh donations. Our current special, get free nuts on your order just for bringing in a corpse of 25 pounds or more. That's the Ice Creamatorium. Welcome back to the Above Average Show Show. We are still here having our chat with the wonderful actress Jessica Schmall. And that there that you just heard was her infamous scream um, from the trailer of The Doorway. So we were able to track it down. So you don't necessarily have to YouTube it, but you can if you want to, because then you can watch the rest of the trailer and get an idea of what the rest of the movie was about. And you worked on a movie called Creature Feature. Mm -hmm. And in this movie... You got 
very vulnerable and out of your comfort zone. You were tied up yes. in your underwear, oh. scratched up. Not literally scratched up. I'm hoping it was just makeup. It was. Um, but I don't know how much of a method actor you are. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> um, but tell us about Creature Feature. What was that about? What was it like on going out of your comfort zone and, and doing all of that, knowing that maybe hundreds, thousands of people might now know what you look like in your panties and bra? Not even bra. That was a very interesting project for me. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not so sure that I would do it again <laughs> um, because of how vulnerable it is. Um, I, I did it more so for the experience, but also because I wanted to work with Chase again. Um, Who was the director, director of, of the doorway. The, yes, and um, Realm From of the Souls. screen that we just heard. Yes. And Realm yes. of Souls. Um, so this is the third time that you've worked with him. Yes, yes. Um, so this movie is a throwback on all like creature features like um, uh, wolverines, uh, like scary clowns. It had it had uh, Jack the Ripper in it. And just different characters, um, different stories, like all wrapped in. And so I am played. Um, I played this girl Olivia who is chained up on this table, and she is being slowly tortured by this like doctor he he's like this creepy scientist who does experiments on people and he's very um well he's very kind of like pornographic <laughs> and very like inappropriate and it was it was very interesting i will say um but i was i was actually in a lot of pain the way that i was chained up so my tears and the way that I was feeling was pretty real. Um, I, I'm crying like throughout the entire scene and screaming, and I am in a lot of pain. My back is on a straight board. I'm just like chained up with real chains um, on my ankles and wrists. So that wasn't very comfortable. Um, but I was able to tap into the acting more. So I was able to like be more afraid. Um, and I enjoyed that aspect of it. I loved, I loved being able to do that and kind of feel scared, get into that character, which was my most vulnerable yet, for sure. For and sure. speaking of violence, um, let's go ahead and talk about one of the things that you enjoy, guns. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's a controversial topic, so we're, right. we won't get too deep into it. Um, but I know that you love going to the gun range. Yes. You've grown up around guns. Yes. Um, what is, like, one of your favorite guns to use at the range? So, I mean, that's really easy. That's just a 1911 Glock. Um, so my dad is a cop, and I was raised around guns. I mean, he was in uh, the Navy as well. My brother went to the military. Guns I've always known about. Um, so and gun shooting. safety. Yeah, and gun safety, of course, absolutely. I have to put that there. Yeah, out there. <laughs> um, I started shooting guns probably at the age of... 10. I mean, I was really young. Um, and my first, I believe my first gun was actually a revolver, a 22. <laughs> and that was very hard to shoot. The trigger was very, um, what's the trigger was, uh, trigger happy. No, heavy. Um, I'm trying to, I, I'm a gun person. Listen to me. <laughs> um, heavy. The trigger was really heavy, so it's hard to pull. Okay. Um, but I started to learn on Glocks, which I really love to shoot, but I also really love shooting, um, oh, come on, what is it called? AK-47. Yes, the AK-47, <laughs> thank you, yes. I love shooting rifles, for one, but the AK-47 was so much fun to shoot. Um, I've shot a sniper rifle, which was a lot of fun. That was different. How are you at sniper shooting? Are you I actually a dead did. shot, or are you... I actually did, right in the middle, right in the center. I did a really that good job. That does not surprise me. Because we've really gone shooting before, too. Yes, that's right. I've seen you shoot. That's right. And you've outshot me, I think, every time that we've gone. <laughs> I love to shoot. Um, I try to get better with each time. Um, my dad is such a great teacher. So, uh, I mean, he is... That's what he does for a living, anyways. I mean, he's a trainer. Um, but that's it's just a fun, fun activity. Again, safe. Very safe with it. But it's just, it's fun. It's, it's um, a release as well, you know. There's, 
I, I see nothing wrong with going to the gun range and shooting at a target. <laughs> nothing wrong with it at all. And sticking with things that you love, mm -hmm. um, and sticking also with the letter G still, mm -hmm. let's move on to grub. You love food. You love trying oh, new yes. food. Um, what are some of the most I don't know, exotic, most obscure, weird things that you've tried that you really, really liked? Um, so this is going to sound really weird, but I've tried a chicken heart. Um, I know, I know. I just made a face. Yeah, <laughs> he did. I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> I, well, okay, so I'm willing to try anything once. Um, is, is, well, if it's good. You know, if it has like, like a horrible taste, I mean a horrible smell, I, I don't know if I'll do it. But usually I'm willing to try anything once. And I, a friend brought over some organs. <laughs> <And> <laughs> some other organs as well, not just the heart. Um... She grilled it, so I didn't just eat it raw. It was nothing like that. And it was actually not bad, I have to say. It wasn't bad. It was it all tasted, chicken innards? Um, yeah, yeah. And, but it tasted like chicken, of course, you know, just dark meat. Was it all chicken on a stick, or was it just like pieces on a plate? Was it the, sorted out? Was it arranged like a shape of a chicken, or where it would be inside of a oh, chicken? Oh, yeah, no, or? it was just like random little like it was pieces just here and there, yeah. Just grilled randomly here and there. <laughs> yeah. But I only tried the chicken heart. Oh, yeah. I don't do liver. No. I was going to just ask, what yep. is one thing that you will not eat? I will eat? not liver do. Liver is one of them. That's a texture that I just cannot mm. get into. Nope. Nope. Can't I totally do it. agree. Yep. I'm not a liver guy. But I also love um, snails. Escargot. It was uh, really, really good. Really. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, <laughs> frog legs. Um, that was one thing I could not stomach. I ordered frog legs once. I tried to eat them. But I also have this... Did you try this, it? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. I tried it, but I also have this weird thing about eating food that's on a bone, and I did Get not that. realize it was going to come out like chicken wings. I would thought it was going to come out like boneless wings. Oh. And so I took the first bite, and I just... Mm. I literally started dry heaving and was like, I can't finish this. And I felt so bad because I was at an office Christmas get-together, and everybody from my work was there, and I ordered this $25 plate, and the <laughs> boss pays for everybody's food, and it's like, I can't eat what I ordered. I am so sorry. I ended up, I think I ended up trading with somebody, so it still worked out. Oh, well, that's good. But it was still a little bit awkward, <laughs> and just not <gasps> anything I would ever try again. Oh, yeah. What is uh, frog legs? What are they called again? Do you know? Frog legs? No, the, the actual, like, term. Frog legs? No, there's a, isn't there? Is there a fancy term for it? There isn't, Alex. Yeah, I, don't I thought think there so. was. I thought there was. Okay. No, it's called a Okay. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> we may be able to edit that out. Yeah. If not, you'll hear our rambling about <laughs> frog legs and how they're called frog legs, oh, and yeah. people have been calling them frog legs for centuries because they are our made frog of frog legs. legs. <laughs> you know they come up with fancy escargot snails. Come on, you know. They're the featherless chicken. You know. <laughs> That's true. I know. The other, other white meat. Yeah. Frogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> because they try and fly, but they don't have wings. Yeah. They just hop. Yeah. <laughs> right. And as far as seafood, I'll, I'll eat just about anything. Seafood, uh, I love. Cannot go without. And then also sticking with the G theme still, mm -hmm. this is not the one that I gave you yet, because we're going to save that one for last. Okay. But on my list, I also have the Gwinnett Braves. Uh -huh. You were able to not play for the Braves, no. but you did get to perform for the Braves. Yes. Um, tell everybody what you did for that, what that experience was like, how fun was that, or how nerve-wracking was that, or how horrible it went. I wasn't there, so I don't know anything about it, so this will be brand new information for all of us together. <laughs> um, so I had to audition for it. And I thought my audition went horribly because I started on a really low octave, really low key. Audition for what? We don't even know oh, what I'm you're sorry. talking about yet. So I had an audition for singing the national anthem. And at the Gwinnett Braves game. At the game. Gwinnett, yes. Um, and the Gwinnett Braves, um, for anybody listening, is a minor league baseball team for the Atlanta Braves. Yes, yes. So, I th again, I thought my audition went horrible. It, but I got a call, I think, like, maybe a month later saying that they would like me to sing on this date. And when I got that call, I was, I was just, like, I was so scared. 
I'm like, I didn't actually expect to get picked for one of the home games. I was like, um, okay, all right. You have to know, I like, I love to sing. It's one of my passions. And you're good at it. it I do. Well, love you got it. picked to sing. You're obviously <laughs> great at it. <laughs> I love it so much, but it's it's one of the it's one of the few things that. I get so afraid of doing in front of people, which I hate, and I want to get past, but it's so hard for me. So that was a big moment for me, being able to perform in, you know, in front of hundreds of people. I st- <laughs> um, so I started on a key higher than what I was supposed to, and that freaked Ouch. me out. Oh, yeah. That freaked me, but, you know, I just went with it. I just went with it. I couldn't do anything about it, and... This is also a cappella, so I am just having to stand stand there at a higher key, which I don't ever start at, like because I can't reach certain notes. So I felt that I did like a really really bad job, and I was really disappointed in it. But my family, like all my friends, they were so supportive. They were like, "No, it was great." Um, strangers came up to me afterwards. It made me feel good about it, but it was a terrifying experience, I have to say. <laughs> it was, but I'm glad I did it. I'm very glad I did, but... I'm glad I asked about that, because that was interesting. I've never heard about it. I had researched you on the internet, like I have done with all of the other mm-hmm. guests, and just Googled and IMDB, and that was one of the fun facts that I had found randomly somewhere. Um, I didn't even know that was on there. <laughs> somebody wrote it somewhere about okay. you. I don't know if you wrote it. Somebody else I wrote it. I did not it, write that. It was like trivia facts about Jessica Schmall, has sung for the Gwinnett Braves, the national anthem. And I was like, oh, I am going to ask about that because I didn't know about that either. Huh. And I was hoping somebody didn't just decide to write that as a joke. <laughs> huh. But I knew you could sing, so it didn't seem far-fetched. That's strange. And let's go ahead and put you on the spot real quick, too, and sing a little bit of something, oh, but not Joe. enough to where I have to pay for a licensing for it. <laughs> oh, Joe. Or we could just change the lyrics. If I could turn back minds. <laughs> you don't want to throw out some share? So I still haven't sung for her yet. Aww. So she's, I know. And her, as in oh, yeah. Allie, who is your girlfriend yes, who's sitting over Allie here. Is, yes, she is. <laughs> so maybe you should do a little serenading me. here at the moment. <laughs> this would be a wonderful, beautiful time. Oh, You'll yeah. have it captured in audio the first time that she's saying to her. And you could just play it over and over on all of your anniversaries, and you never have to sing again, because you could just hit play. That's what I did for you. And then she'll just know that you love her forever. Oh. My voice is so low, it almost sounded just like Cher, though. I was very proud of that performance. <laughs> um, just a couple bars of anything you want. Goodness. Just so we can hear that awesome rasp that you have. No pressure. No pressure at all. None. No. None. Nobody's listening. <laughs> I have absolutely zero listeners right now. <gasps> Nobody has listened to a single podcast. And for those of you listening, this is because I recorded all of these in one weekend. And none of them come out for another two weeks. So I have absolutely no fans that like this. So nobody will listen to you at this moment. Uh, at this moment. Wait, yes. Right, right. But Allie is so ready for this. <laughs> Look at her. She's got the biggest grin I on her know. face right now. She's ready for this. <laughs> She has been wanting this. Amazing grace. Right. See? Perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. A mm-hmm. couple bars. There's more of that. If you want to hear more of that, you can go to Jessica Schmall's YouTube. Um, she's actually got the full version of some of these songs on YouTube that she can go and listen to. Amazing, amazing voice. Mm, um, if there's you. anybody who wants to cut a record with that voice, feel free to contact her also. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that brings us to the what was the third G in our list of things to talk about, which is now the fourth G, which is girls. Girls. Let's talk about girls, girls, girls. Let's talk about As girls. As Motley Crue puts it, girls, right. girls, girls. Um, recently, you have come out. Yes. And it was... Something that none of us that knew you were really expecting. Right. Um, and there's some great stories that go along with that. I will just let you tell us as much or as little as you want to about this, and I will sit back and listen for a little <laughs> bit. All right. So, yeah, I mean, this is interesting. Um, I mean, I have always known 
that I was attracted to women. Um, I mean, ever since I was a little girl. I know that sounds crazy, but I've always had like little girl crushes on actresses, um, teachers. Weird. Sorry. Um, I find nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay, nothing good. weird about that. Okay, good. Um, I've always just been attracted to women. Um, just, just something about them captivated me, but I never thought anything of it. So, you know, I thought I was supposed to be into guys. So I always dated guys, um, started dating guys probably around the age of 14, which is too young in my opinion. <laughs> um, and I have be- before now I had never been in love and I wasn't sure why, um, I had just never been able to connect with a man on a level that I have been able to with a woman, um, and in many ways. And so, but I kept that hidden for so, so long and I, I kept fighting it because I've been brought up Christian and I still am. I still, I still love God. That's, and how do you, how do you, I don't want to say justify that, Mm -hmm. um, but how would you help explain that to somebody that may be a very conservative right-wing Christian that thinks that that is not the way that you should be acting? Mm-hmm. So the way I would explain it, it's, well, love is love. And um, I never really knew the, the, the true meaning of love um, until I got into this relationship with Ali. Um but it's just it's just this feeling. If if I have this feeling for someone so strong, why should that be wrong? Why should I be wrong in the way that I'm feeling? Um, I don't think that you should be limited. You know, to, I and I always always settled, and I was just to a point that I was no longer willing to settle. And so I, des- I decided to do something about it. Um, I started to go on a dating app. This is before I came out to everyone. I just wanted to kind of get the feel for things. And this is after three years of no dating whatsoever. The last person I dated um, was a guy, and I was with him for about a year Uh and that was, again, that was more of a friendship than anything, and it was more for him. Uh, but anyways, I went on this dating app, and I just wanted to see if I could meet anybody that I could connect with and see where that goes. Um, and Allie was actually uh, my first date on this app. Um, and we clicked. First of how many, out of curiosity? <laughs> actually, my first. First and only. First and only date since the three years of no dating, yes. Um, I had talked to other women, but it just didn't go anywhere. But um, after things with Allie, after things started getting getting serious, which was very quickly, um, I I needed to come out to my my parents about it. Um, So I went on a date with Allie. And it happened to last over the entire weekend. And um, I get a call from my mom on a Monday morning. And she is freaking out because I haven't answered my phone. And I am asleep. And she is just, she has called the cops. She has already um, asked for a search team, has my dad involved. They're looking for the truck that I'm driving. They have no idea where I am. And it's just because I fell asleep. (laughs) <laughs> and she didn't hear from me for two hours. That was it. So when that happened, actually, my mom asked me. She was like, are you gay? And I was like, okay, you know what? It's it's time to, to finally be honest. And that's when I came out to her. Um, and then it wasn't a couple of weeks uh, later until I tell, told my dad, which was very hard, but my family has been very loving and very supportive. Um, and I, I'm so grateful for that. And all of my friends have been so, so supportive. And this is just, I've been, I've never been happier, never been happier. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy. And she's the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I am 
Since I know you, I am happy for you, too. Thank you. I don't know if I've ever stated it before. I think, um, yeah, you have. Because we're across the country, and sometimes we don't get to talk as I much. I know, I know. And when we do talk, we forget what we say, because it was like true. a month ago. I know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But I am happy for you, and I've noticed how happy you are, too. I and am. I've, I've very... noticed that there's been a change. Like you said, there's like a weight lifted that you feel more yes, free now. That I do. You are you. Yes. Which has been great. It's been wonderful. It's always great to see anybody who can find their inner self like that with any aspect of their life, not necessarily just their sexual preferences right. and stuff like that, but just finding themselves in who they are deep down inside and just being able to be themselves exactly. without feeling like society is making them or forcing them to be a certain way. Right. And yeah. So don't hide who you are. And I was hiding who I was for so long, but... Being able to to really be who I am, truly am, has made me happier than I've ever been. So that's the message here. Just don't hide who you are. Be who you be who you be who you want to be. Let's be who you want to be. Awesome. We are going to go ahead and end on that um, for this section. So we're going to go ahead and let you guys listen to a word from our sponsors. Our faux sponsors, here's a faux commercial for you, and we will be right back after this. This episode brought to you by Love. Good day, mates, and welcome back to the Above Average Joe Show. Um, actually, what we are going to do, <laughs> and the reason I did that is because I'm about to have to do an Australian accent, so mm -hmm. I was getting into the mood of things. Um, we have a cold read. It'll be with me and Jessica Schmall, and Jessica's going to try to do her cold read in a British accent. Mm. I will try to do mine in an Australian accent, and what a cold read is, is I wrote a script, so I have seen it once. I have not looked back at it. Um, and this is the first time Jessica has seen it. She has not read through the script. She doesn't nope. know what it's about. Other than I think I told her that it's a little bit sexual in nature. <laughs> so that is all the heads up she has. So if we start laughing and giggling, um, I do apologize. But that is part of a cold read. We don't know what's coming up. It'll be a surprise to you, a surprise to us. But at least hopefully it'll be fun and entertaining for everybody. Yep. Sounds good. Um, so the premise here, just to give everybody a heads up, including Jessica who is sitting next to me. Uh, performing. This is supposed to be more of a nature TV show type deal. Um, it would be like a TV show or a radio show where we talk about different animals. And so we will be wildlife experts talking about the zoo animals that are around us, that are within our vision, and that are close enough for us to touch. So here we go. I will be. Um, you'll be playing Shannon. I'll be playing Lenny, which I don't think I use the names throughout. I just use two random names. Um, I don't even know if there are Australians named Lenny <laughs> or British people named Shannon. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but, Who knows? But here we go. <laughs> here we are at the world famous Utah Zoo, surrounded by the biggest animals, the fiercest animals, and the most exquisite beasts to tread upon this earth. With me today is Shannon Landon Buchanan. I did use your name. That is awesome. <laughs> um, and better known as the Critter Whisperer. You are the Critter Whisperer, Shannon. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Lenny. It's such a pleasure to be here today. It is such a pleasure to watch you uh, do your thing. You have such a way with animals. The way to whisper into their ears. The way you smell. Your animal instincts. Mm. Yes, let's get busy. We have a lot to do today. Where should we start? Uh, I thought it might be good to begin with the... Hair! Let us start beginning with your hair. Excuse me? In my hands, I hold your hair. Your hair's named Peter. Such a beautiful rabbit he is. Soft white fur, long ears... And just look at those feet. How lucky could he be? Peter is an English Angora. He is three years old and about 8.2 pounds. That is incredible! Did he just tell you all that? No. 
I have it written on his bio sheet attached to his carrier. Oh, I see. Mm. Um, what can he tell us about himself to you right now? Let me ask him. The instructions there are make weird animal rabbit noises for anybody curious. <laughs> he says he doesn't like the feel of your hands. They are very rough and you should try using more hand moisturizer. I'm sorry. I will keep that in mind the next time I get to stroke your hair. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should move over to another animal? What about my... Boobies! You have a great pair of boobies here. A booby is a seabird that is closely related to the gannet. You not only have one, but you have two of these here with you today. I call them my girls, Michelle and Hillary. Hillary is the white one. I think she is saying something. Hold on. Oh my. What did she just say to you? She's asking that you not stare at her so much, and also her eyes are up here. Oh, oh. Well, let's move on. Uh, yes, that might, that might be best. You seem to be making the creatures a little... Horny! A horny toad! Let's talk about this little guy right here. I've named him Kami. <laughs> oh, hello, Kami. What's that? I don't even know how to make these noises. <laughs> what sound does a toad make? <laughs> uh. yep. Oh my. <laughs> Yummy. Oh, behave. Okay, um, this is a little awkward. Maybe we should move on again. I'm not done yet. <laughs> You like that? Right. Yes, yes. Right. Okay, I'm done now. Okay, please let's move on. Wow, what a shag. No need to rub it in. No, over here, the most beautiful shag I've ever seen. The shag is relative to the cormorants. Oh, you mean Humpty, pronounced with an umpty. Absolutely. I will tell him. He hates that joke. Well, maybe you could tell him he could shut it, or I'll send him back to the island with the other pelicans. Oh, what's a pelican noise? I have no idea you're <laughs> supposed to make it up. Um, I'm just going to go I'm like... I'm just the writer. <laughs> I'm just going to go with bird noises. <laughs> He says, he says, please. What an a-hole. A-hole, named for the adult Hawaiian flag tail fish found in the Pacific Ocean around the island of Hawaii. And let me guess, you speak a-hole too? I did spend a little time researching them while at Oahu. <laughs> um. And now she's going to speak with the a-holes. <laughs> Maybe we should focus a little bit more on my cock. That's a weird looking rooster you have there. Such a small head, relatively. Hey there now, give me my rooster back. You don't have to snap at me like that, standing there with your own cock in your hand. Oh, don't make me walk over there with... Sorry. Don't you make me walk him over here this way. You wouldn't dare. You watch me. Do not put your cock near my ass. Little Eeyore over here seems to like it. They look like they might end up being really great friends. No. I said no. Maybe if I slide him over here instead, would you rather have him here closer to your... Don't say it. But that is better. I like that. Right there. A little to the left now. A little more. Keep going. Keep going. Meow. Meow. <laughs> no! My cock! Your, your pussy! Cat killed my cock! It was a prize-winning cock! I'm sorry. It'll be okay. They have this 
to a lot of guys. But not me. It does not happen to me. Never. <laughs> she wants to get into it. Aww. Your puppy's getting into my cock. There she is. <laughs> she says, oh no, I don't like that. <laughs> it's okay. Not everyone was raised by wild wolves and monkeys like you. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember... Even animals and people have feelings too. <laughs> yes, yes, you are correct. Maybe next week sometime you can come over to my place with your cock. <laughs> no, Garfield won't be there. My kitty at home. But JJ, hairless. <gasps> mm, no lion? No lion. And maybe eventually... Eeyore will come around too. How does that sound? Here, let me hold your cock for you. You can caress my hair. Mmm, this is nice. That's right, Lenny. Pet that bunny. Pet the bunny, Lenny. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lenny. Truly. I hope you like my adventure. Best gay meat there is out there. Let's eat dinner. And cutscene. Oh. <laughs> so at the very least, it was entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a quick break, fun. and we will be right back. Don't change that podcast. <laughs> You have little ones running around your house on all fours, sniffing butts and clawing away at carpets and upholstery? It's time to call us, your friendly local neighborhood pedophile. We can be a clipper, snipper, and filer for your fur baby. Ever file their nails down too much? No problem. We will even defile your fur baby right in front of you. That's right. We can add acrylic nails back onto their paws for an additional minimal charge. Call now, and we'll throw in a castration rubber band for free. Call now, 155-P-E-T-A-F-I-L-E. That's 155-Pedophile. 155-P-E-T-A-F-I-L-E. to play the game of 25. 25, where the most points that you can get is approximately 40. Um, we are going to have our guest here today as our contestant, Jessica Schmall. Mm -hmm. um, what I am going to do is I am going to give you some clues, and what you need to do is guess the actor or actress um, of who I am describing. There will be five of them, five rounds. Each one has one actor or actress, specific person. Okay. Um, for each clue that I give you, you will lose points. So you start with five points for the first clue. If I have to give you another clue, four points. Another clue, three points. Work your way down. If you don't guess them by the last clue, zero points. <laughs> zero points. Got it. So we will start with the first round. It is a female actress who is 44 years old currently and was born in Culver City, California. Can you name this actress? <laughs> mm. Give me another clue. For four points, her first TV movie credit was in 1978 with the TV movie Suddenly Love. Her first movie credit was in 1980 with the movie Altered States. Altered States? Altered States. Oh, gosh. Oh. I She's know. She's 44 I'm... years old, mm -hmm. which would put her approximately five to six years old during this time frame. You almost said it. it Drew like, Barrymore? That is Drew Barrymore okay, for four points. Okay, all right. You like mouthed the word Drew uh, and yeah. then you like stopped when you were supposed yeah. to exhale <laughs> air. Drew Barrymore. <laughs> I didn't know she was from Culver City. Culver okay. City, California is her birth city. Okay. Um, round number two. We're looking for a male actor, 52 years old, from Brooklyn, New York. 52, Brooklyn, New York. Oh, 
Nicolas Cage? Incorrect. For four points, first TV credit of his was in 1987 on The Cosby Show. It was guest starring appearances, so it wasn't he wasn't a main recurring actor. Okay. Um, I think he had like three or four episodes approximately. Um, his first movie credit was in 1989 with the movie Going Overboard. Oh, um, 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 uh, Tombstone. Come on, uh, Kurt Russell. Incorrect. Oh, oh no. No. I don't think Kurt Russell. Going was. Overboard. He was in it, but he's not the only person who's in the movie. He may have starred in the movie, but there's a dozen other actors that were still in the movie, too. I so, for three, three points... Three points. Dang it, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> he has starred in several movies with Kevin James. He's also starred in a movie with Damon Wayans and a movie with Kathy Bates. I can't, I can't. For two points, I'm going to give you two of his most famous quotes... Um, off of IMDb. I will try to perform them as best as I can as an impersonation. Mm -hmm. And it is a terrible impersonation, but you'll enjoy it. Okay. You ain't cool unless you pee your pants. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, O.J. Simpson, not a Jew. Have a happy, happy Hanukkah. <sighs> wow, you're trying a blank on this. <laughs> I am, I am. I can, oh my gosh, and I know it's going to bug me as soon as I find out his name, um, but it's like, it's not Denzel, and I'm like, 52 years old from New York City, going overboard, what movie is that? I think it was with Kurt Russell, I don't remember for That's sure. That's the one yeah. with um, um, Goldie Hawn, right? I think so. Yeah, or Goldie Hawn. Or is that Hawn just overboard? Co That's just overboard, going overboard. <laughs> she knows this one. I don't. I don't. I know. Both of them. I know. Everybody's gotten it on this one. But you also got four points on the first. Everybody else has got two points on the first one. So you've already doubled their points. Do you want to go for the one point? Gosh. This is really making me upset right now. One point is his I, most famous movie. Do you want the one point? Yeah, I'll get the one point. The Water Boy. Oh my gosh. I was going to freaking say Adam Sandler. I really <laughs> was. Oh, I was going to say Adam Sandler. One point for Adam oh, Sandler. Oh, why didn't I just say it? <sighs> Round number three. I'm doubting myself over here. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting you're in my head. I'm everybody. getting in my head. Oh. Round number three, you're looking for a male actor who's 53 years old okay. from New York City. And it is not anybody we've already named. I will give you that clue, mm -hmm. too. Thanks. 53 from New York. Mm hmm Uh-huh. I don't know. Four-point credit. Um, four points for this one. First TV credit was in 1986 on the TV show Kate and Alley. And his first movie credit was in 1987 with the movie Hot Pursuit. That's a movie I haven't seen in a very long time, so I couldn't even tell you about it. So, no, that clue is not going to help me. Okay. For three points, he has starred in a trilogy with Owen Wilson a trilogy with Robert De Niro, and has also starred in a movie with Gene Hackman. Trilogy with Owen Wilson. Um, what was the trilogy that he did? Um, and a trilogy with who? What was the other one? Robert De Niro and Owen Wilson. Trilogies trilogy. with both of those. Different trilogies. Not right, the same right, one. right. Owen Wilson, trilogy. Gosh. So moving on for two points, I'm going to read you two quotes of his. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. And, oh, just like it's spelled, F-O-C-K-E-R. Okay, so Robert De Niro. Oh, wait, um, no, I'm he, sorry. No, 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 Ben Stiller. Yes. Ben Stiller. I didn't mean to ben say Ben Stiller for two points. Robert De Niro. I mean, Ben Stiller. You're thinking of the yes, clue. Yes, yes. <laughs> ben Stiller. Correct for two points. What was the, um... What was the trilogy? The Owen Wilson trilogy? Oh, oh, oh. Um, the one at the museum. Night at the museum. Night at the museum. He's a little dude. Yep. I never would have... I, yep, I wouldn't have remembered that. Round number four. Yes. We're looking for an actress, All female, right. 49 years old, from Sherman Oaks, California. Mm, Halle Berry? Incorrect. <laughs> for four points, first TV credit was in 1990 with the TV show Malloy. And her first movie credit was in 1993 with the horror movie Leprechaun. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston for four points. 
Round number five. We're looking for a female who is 46 years old from San Diego, California. What's her name? Um, I'll just say... Oh, no, she's... Never mind. She's Welsh. Goodness, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Who's uh, Welsh? I'm curious. All right, not Welsh. Uh, she's... Um, I can't even think of her. Naomi Watts. Uh, no. Not Welsh. Uh, what, what is she? She's got an accent. So nope. I can't remember what she is. <laughs> no, I know. Um, yep. 46 years old. 46 years old. Helen Hunt? No, incorrect. Okay. okay. Um, for four points, her first TV credit was in 1996 with the TV show Space Ghost Coast to Coast. And her first movie credit was in 1994 with the movie The Mask. Not the Eric Stoltz version, the Jim Carrey version. Cameron Diaz? Correct, for four points. You have 15 points going into the final bonus round. Woo the final bonus round, what I will do is I will give you those answers again that you just named. Okay. So I'll give you those five actors and actresses okay. on a list. Okay. You will have 30 seconds to name as many movies as you can that includes two or more of these actors and actresses. You cannot guess wrong. So guess as many movies as you want to. That and name as many as you can that have at least two of them that have stars in the same together movie. Okay. in the same movie. So here's the list of the five actors and actresses. I will count you down from five. Um, as you're looking that over, just remember it has to have two of them together right. in order to count. They cannot start in the movie by themselves, and we will start in five, four, three, two, one. Name some movies. Okay, so Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler, The Wedding Singer, Fifty First Dates, Blended, um, Cameron Diaz and Drew Barrymore, Charlie's Angels 1 and 2, um, Jennifer Aniston and Ben Stiller did Along Came Polly, um, and let's see, um, Adam Sandler and Ben Stiller, Ben Stiller, uh, we just, Night at, Night at, uh, no. No, 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 Adam Sandler's not in that. Um, and time is <laughs> up. 30 like, seconds is oops. finished. Um, you have gotten one, two, three, four, five, and then, six oh, of and them. I meant to say, I also meant to say the Jennifer Aniston Adam Sandler movie. Just go with it. Dang it, I meant that to say that would have been one. another one. 21 yeah. points, though. All right. 21 points. Um, that is a very, very good score. I think it actually is the top score so far. Yay. Um, so let's go ahead, and we will be right back after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by the Wombat. The Wombat, also known as Vasculomide Vombatus Ursinus. Try saying that ten times fast. I bet you can't. Jessica, you just had a birthday recently. And did something with animals, which you love animals. I do. Um, but you wanted to share your experience with us. Yes, that was so much fun. So my sister-in-law got this um, set up free behind the scenes at the Nashville Zoo. Um, so I was able to get up close and personal with um, a few animals, like a giraffe, whose name was Congo. He was so cute. We got to feed him some lettuce. Um, but he was he was quite fond of me, which was so sweet. He like, we had this moment, there's pictures of it, videos of it too. Um, but we shared this moment, he's like staring into my eyes and then like gives me this big kiss on my face. I loved it every minute. Um, he was so, so sweet. And then after him, we got to see a katapi, which is a very rare animal. They say it's, you're more likely to find a unicorn than a katapi. So, it looks like a hybrid mix of like a zebra, a giraffe, and a horse, but it's not. That is a weird mix. It's so it, yeah, but it's beautiful. Um, the colors, I, it's so beautiful. It was so sweet. The um, its coat was like velvety smooth, looked like velvet too. Um, and it's called a hot coffee. <laughs> Katapi. Mm. People like to say katapi, you know, but carbon coffee. <laughs> So, um, they, I think there's like 40 of them in the world. Oh, wow. Yes. They're very, very rare. So not carbon copies. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, his name was Quasi. He was also very sweet. Um, uh, showed a little poo-poo, you know, did a little, <laughs> did a little dance. <laughs> 
Then we also went into um, this one area, enclosed area with like birds, and there was a sloth. There was um, like a serval. It was beautiful. It looked like a leopard. Um, we didn't get to pet it, but there was a woman inside the cage with it. He was like loving up on her. It was so cute. I just wanted to be that woman so bad. But Did they ever let the woman out or was she part of the exhibit? <laughs> she was just sitting in there when we were, when we were there. She's just chilling she out with the serval. <laughs> yeah, she works there. Okay. She was the trainer. So it wasn't a visitor the that no, was like, right. you know what? That looks fun to come with. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> Gosh, no. She was a trainer. She's um, raised this serval. And then there was this um, Guinea singing dog. Um, New Guinea singing dog. And it's actually supposed to be one of the most vicious animals. Where is it from? Um, oh, yeah. Duh. Jessica. Um, it's supposed to be like one of the most vicious animals, but it looks like just a regular dog. Like just a sweet face. So cute. Just looks like a regular dog. One of the most vicious carnivores out there. Crazy. Crazy. It's a small creature. Um, then I got up close and personal with a... Um, what was it? Hyacinth. Hyacinth? Okay. I got up close and personal with a hyacinth macaw who was also very fond of me. So it was a big cage and I would move around and I would like duck down and I would get up and he would follow me everywhere I went. What is a hyacinth macaw for those that are listening oh, that right. may not know? <laughs> so this is an exotic um, bird. Beautiful. It's blue. Um, if you've ever seen Rio, <laughs> those are macaws, um, but this is just a hyacinth uh, macaw. You can look it up. They're beautiful and very loud, very talkative. Um, and very creepy at points, um, apparently. Yes, yes. He very was showing me. He was showing me his tongue. He was getting <laughs> right up to the cage with his eye, just staring into my eyes. Like he, and then I would duck down. He'd come down the cage. Um, I would move around. He'd follow me everywhere I went. I loved it. I was like, yes, Tony, like you are my little, my little man. <laughs> that was your inspiration for yeah. a roommate's unwanted right there. Right, <laughs> right there. <laughs> He's seen it. He knows who you are. <laughs> right, right. He saw the, he saw the Courtney. <laughs> I loved him though. No, but it was such, it was so much fun. It was a rainy day, but we enjoyed it. We, it, it sounds like a fun time. It was, it was so much fun. They've got to have Mexican and margaritas afterwards. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a good day. It was a really, really good day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you for and, having me. Oh, you are welcome. I'm so you glad I was back here too. Time. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And tune in next time for some more of the Above Average Joe Show. Oh, yeah. Thank you again to our special guest, Jessica Schmall. Special shout out thanks to Addison and Jamie Lynn for all their assistance on this episode. The Above Average Show Show was written and produced by me. Theme song composed and arranged by yours truly. Be sure to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitters, and look for us on Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. You can also check out another podcast I co-host, The Extra Unordinary, and other great media content by Moon Possum Productions at moonpossum.com. <laughs>